What's up? What's up? It's me. It's the V Show. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? It's Saturday. I just finished watching Donald Glover on SNL. That's a yummalicious man right there, honey. Mm, mm, mm. Anyway, as usual, we have our candle of the day. Today, it's going to be peppermint. This is the peppermint candle that I made from the, um, well, you got to look at my older videos. I talk about um, the molds that I bought. So this is one of the pillar molds. It's a square. Peppermint. Peppermint is the scent. So, peppermint is the candle of the day. All right. And as usual, no tails. Yes. As always. And my aura glass. Until I find a glass that feels so good in my hand that can compare and looks as good. This is going to be the glass of choice. So, or glass, hollers. So, if you look in one of my, well, actually the last video I did, I talk about when I went to a health fair at my job. And there was all of these things that um, occurred as a result of that. So, one of the things that I ended up having to do was a colonoscopy, everyone. Now, for those of you that don't know, um, colonoscopies are suggested for those of us that are over 50. They suggest that you get one um, just to make sure that, you know, there's no chances of colon cancer, yada, yada, yada. So, um... I'm going to take you guys through the experience that I had. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. The thing is, when I first heard about getting a colonoscopy, this was when I had my old primary care physician before she retired. And this was like over two years ago. Um, well, at yeah, over two years ago. she it, I was over 50 when I met her. I was like 51. And she um, told me I need to, need to get a colonoscopy. She gave me the guy's number and all that stuff. And I never called him. Never did. Right? So, fast forward. Um, health fair. Got in touch with a primary care physician. And this guy is starting from basics. Um, like I said in my last video, he's thorough as fuck. I, so, that was one of the first things I had to get over with. So, I got it done um, yesterday. Um... It was interesting. The most interesting part of it was the prep. Um, I would, you know, I, I, my plan was to have the bottle here, but I don't have it here. So I'm going to tell you like this. The bottle is like yay big. Okay, really big. That big around. And when I picked it up from the pharmacy, there was this powder in the bottom and that's the stuff that actually flushes you out because the whole idea is they have to flush you out make sure there's nothing in your colon so that the camera can go on up there and do what it's gonna do so i had to start the flush thursday my colonoscopy was yesterday so now what they suggest is that the day before you don't need anything what you do, if you want to eat anything, you have to eat, like, uh, well, not eat, but drink stuff. Um, anything that can fit through a straw is basically what my doctor told me. Anything that, if it can fit through a straw, then it's good. So, um, I had mad juices, like smoothies and stuff. But, um, you end up realizing, well, I mean, it's amazing how, what the mind can you know, um, adjust to, because once I realize, okay, you know, this is happening, this is the way it's gotta be, you can't eat, every now and then I would get that little thing, like, oh, I wanna eat something, but then I was like, okay, no, you can't, so I would throw it out of my mind, the good thing is I'm really good with that kind of thing, so the hunger part really didn't bother me as bad as I thought it would be, so I couldn't eat anything, like I said, so I kept drinking juices and water, that 
also helps to keep you um, hydrated and it also keeps you full so this way, you know, you don't have to... It's bad enough when you can't eat, but then when your stomach is growling, it's like, really? So, you know, that helps to keep that at bay. All right? So... I started drinking that stuff. I was at work. I left work early because I really wanted to get started early because the earlier you start, the you know the sooner you can get it done. So I started around five drinking that stuff. I got it down, you know, but well, I think around twelve ish um, was when I took like the last little bit. Now, what happens is when you drink this stuff, I didn't have any cramping. Or anything that was the good part. Um, you're just gonna go to the bathroom a lot. Uh, when I did do it, I think around nine, ten o'clock. By that point, I don't know how many times I go to the bathroom at that point. But by that point, it was it was like the the hmm, for lack of a better word, the poop was kind of clear. It was clear. It was like water. So I was like, all right, great. I'm clean as a whistle. Um, you know what? And I forgot to get the, the pictures. I want to show you guys pictures because I have pictures of what the inside of my colon looks like. Ooh, fun times. So, um, the, 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 the thing to get over is the mental part is about, as far as the prep goes, the mental part about not eating that's like the hardest. Once you know you can't eat something, that's when, of course, you're going to be hungry. That's when, of course, everybody's going to have hamburgers around you. That's when somebody's going to cook something you want, right? So that's the, like I said, that's the hardest part to get over, just getting over the mental thing. But once you get over that, that's fine. So um, fast forward, get through the prep. Wake up yesterday, I get to the doctor. So after I'm finally called upstairs, right, the medical assistant shows me into a changing room where I have a locker. I put my stuff in there and it had like this little swirly thing with the key on it. So I had to keep that on my wrist. Really cool. And one of the things I was concerned about was what the hell is going to happen with my stuff? Is it going to be secure? It was secure. Um, so after I come out, I'm sitting there and I'm waiting to be called in. And two more folks, the medical assistant brought up. So they had changed into the gowns. Oh, you put on two gowns. Uh, it doesn't matter which way they go. She said she doesn't care as long as both of them go on. So what I did was I put the first one on with the back facing back. And then I put the second one on with the back facing the front. So this way my ass ain't showing and the front ain't showing. So this way all of that's good. So I go there. I'm sitting down and I'm waiting to be called in. Two other folks she brought in. So now they changed their clothes and... um. They came to sit down. Now, one of them came out first. It was an older gentleman. He looked like he was maybe in his 60s. So he sat down to my left. So there was another lady that was in one of the other changing stations. She hadn't come out yet. So me and a gentleman are sitting there. And so I said, so what are you here for? And he started laughing. Because it's like, I mean, we're just sitting there. So um, we're there for the same thing. And he goes, um, he goes, this, is this your first time? I said, yeah, it's my first one. He goes, it's nothing. It's a breeze. You sleep through it. And uh, he says, I've had a five of them. I said, five? Wow. That's a lot. And he was like, yeah, well, you know, it's not a biggie. So, it, you know, that really honestly made me feel a lot better about what was about to happen. So then the other lady comes out. She looks like she's in her 30s. So she sits to my right. And she's sitting there and she heard during the time that he and I were talking, she had come out of the dressing room and had sat there. So she heard the conversation. So another medical assistant came and they called homeboy. So he left, left out. So me and the other lady is sitting there. So a couple of minutes goes by and she goes, you know, 
not for nothing, but I've had millions of them, and don't worry about it. Because, like he said, it's, it's not a big deal. And she said she had millions of them. I'm, I, the, the first thing I wanted to ask her was, does that mean that they found something? You know, or, or what's up with that? Because from what I understand, colonoscopies aren't something that you just do just because. I mean, if that's the case, then you just go get a colonic if you just want to clean yourself out. But a colonoscopy is a little bit different. You're looking to find something. So if you fed millions, that means... Anyway. So she and I chatted, chatted. Then they called me. I was so ready to go in at this point because honestly, I really just wanted to see what the fuck the experience was, seriously. Because you think about it, right? There's a, you know there's going to be a camera up your butt. If they going to stick it up there, you know they're going to do that. I didn't know, like, my thought was, I knew that I wasn't going to feel anything when it happened because they were going to put me out. My thought was, how the heck is my butt going to be feeling when I finish? I don't feel anything right now. I'm sitting in the pool. I would get a little more graphic, but I'm not going to get there. But anyway, I don't feel anything. It's nothing. You did. I, if 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 I didn't go through it, I wouldn't have even realized that I had a damn colonoscopy. Nothing was up there. It, it doesn't feel anything. So they call me. Medical assistant uh, walks me through. She goes, go straight into that open room. And I saw the open room. That's the room where they do the procedure. Um, the doctor that was assisting my doctor, Dr. C, was there. She introduced herself. The anesthesiologist came in. She introduced herself. Everyone was really, really nice. So um, then my doctor comes in. Now, I'm laying on the, the, the gurney. They had... First, she had to find my vein. Now, my veins are really small, and they roll. My mom's veins were like that also. So, um, she was looking for a vein, and I told her, I said, well, you might have a hard time because my veins roll, whatever. So, she's talking, trying to find it here. Then I said, well, you know, sometimes they can go through here, but see if you can see here, I have a birthmark on this arm. But if you're really good um, with phlebotomy, you would be able to find a vein because people have found it here. I guess she wasn't great with it. Or, oh, also, and she did mention, this is also going to happen for those of you who are going to get this. Because prior to the procedure, you can't really eat anything. You can drink a lot of water, but it's still going to dehydrate you. That's one thing I noticed. I didn't pee a lot. Um, you do get dehydrated. Even though I drink a lot of water, I drink juices and stuff, you get dehydrated. So she said that also affects the vein. So she couldn't find it here. So she ended up going into this hand. Now, I don't know if you can see it here. This hand, that vein right there, she hit that one. That's usually what ends up happening to me when they can't um, get into my arm. So she hit this vein. Now, this is the crazy thing. So I go in. Um, like I said, they all introduce themselves. She's talking to me. She's telling me um, I'm going to take it to blood pressure, and I'm also going to run a line. And when the doctor's about to start, that's when I'll be giving you the medicine. So, uh, I felt it when she put the, the, the needle in. She's talking, and she said, now, and if, oh, <laughs> before that. So, now, the, the gurney was low. The, the gurney, what, bed stretcher, whatever the fuck it is, was low. So, my doctor comes in, he's like, hey, Ms. Sanchez, how you doing? Yada, yada, yada. So now he there's a lever that he has to step on to bring the thing up so that you know he I'm higher. So he's doing it. He's like, after he finally gets me up, he's like, oh my god, I didn't think I would ever finish. So he's joking, trying to make me feel better. And I'm like, I, I was really really happy about that. He's really great. I mean, the man's falling all over me like laughing, ha 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 ha. And I'm like, ah yeah yeah yeah, let's just do this now. The anesthesiologist comes in. She says, well, now I'm going to start to put the medication. You may feel a little burning, but that's just the medication. Don't worry about it. And it's not going to burn a lot. Yada, yada. So when she said the burning part, I'm like, oh, fuck. What the hell is this going to be? 
So I felt the tingle. Now, it did burn, but it wasn't like, oh my God, I'm on fire. But you feel the medication, right? So I felt it here, right? Started. Now, you know how, if any of you have ever been under anesthesia, anesthesia, Sometimes when you go under, they'll tell you, um, count backward from 100. And next thing you know, by 98, 97, you're out. She didn't even tell me to count. She told me I was going to feel a burning. Now, she's talking. And I felt the burning. And she's still talking. I don't know what the hell this woman was saying. Because I felt myself going like this. Next thing I know, I realized, like, all of this was tingling. Like that burning feeling that I felt here, all of this. And the next thing I know, I'll wake up in recovery. The only, if I had to say um, discomfort, if I felt any discomfort, it was, I need to change this song, guys, because I feel like the, song, the same music is playing. If I felt any discomfort, it was the fact that, I mean, of course he had to use lube. Because remember, it's a colonoscopy. I don't have anything to describe it, but see this candle? I'm assuming that the tube is a little bigger than this, but it has to go in because it has a camera in it. So the uncomfortability I felt was the, the lube. I... I didn't know that it was lube. I just felt my butt was wet. So I'm thinking to myself, either it's crap or it's blood or maybe it's lube because I'm thinking uh, you had to stick something up there. I'm hoping you use some KY on it, bitch. So I'm thinking it's one of those three things. So, um, you know, I open my eyes. It's bright as fuck in there. First thing I do is I grab the blanket, I pull it over my head. So the medical assistant who happened to be in recovery, it's like, hi, Ms. Sanchez, how are you? How are you feeling? And I said, I'm good, but I'm hungry. And she says, don't worry, you you know, you're in recovery. Everything's great. Um, He did pull out two polyps. And I was like, oh, shit. Because, honestly, there was a part of me that felt like they was going to find something. I don't know why. I knew they was going to find something. There. Excuse me. So, they did. She said, like, they pulled out two pounds, but, you know, everything's great. You're fine. I'm going to go over your um, instructions on for when you leave, yada, yada, yada. And then she asked me if I had gas. And... That's one of the things that, that I heard about, too. You're going to get gas because I, for whatever reason. So I'm laying there, and while she's talking, I'm low-key farting because I'm like, I don't want to be rude, even though I know she's probably expecting that shit. I'm like, I don't want to be rude and be loud, but you, you feel it. Well, I can't say what you're going to feel, but I felt I felt this swirling around in my damn intestines. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to let out some little ones while she's talking and hopefully they won't be too loud. But then it gets to a point where it got to a point, rather, it got to a point where it started swirling around and I was like, I need to let out the biggest fucking fart ever. Like, like seriously, and this lady needs to stop talking. The crazy thing is, she was on point, okay? Because just at that moment when it was like starting to swirl around in my stomach, and I felt it, and it was getting hard to hold, she said, um, if you have that kind of gas where you need to go to the bathroom, I'm going to let you go in a minute. Um, let me blah, 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 blah. And I was like, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. So she... Um, Brought me back some water. She asked me if I wanted water, room temperature, or with ice, which was really considerate. Um, I said, just room temperature is fine. Um, she gave me the water. She was telling me about my instructions, telling me the doctor's going to call me on Monday to find out how I'm doing, yada, yada, yada. Now I'm going to take you to a bathroom. I was like, yes. 
I go to the bathroom, I sit, and oh my god, I felt like I was farting for like five minutes. So it's just like, big, and I guess that's a result of you know when they're inserting the um, the camera. I guess it just brings the air with it. So uh, I went ahead, got rid of that. Not, oh my god, that felt so good. So. Do that. Um, oh, and when I stood up, they were there. I guess everybody is different in how they respond to anesthesia because they were really concerned about whether I was going to be dizzy or not. I was not dizzy, like at all. Not dizzy, not groggy, nothing. That anesthesiologist was on point because I didn't feel nothing. And I've been under anesthesia before and I've felt that grogginess when I woke up, but I've it was nothing, nothing at all. Um, so I come out of the bathroom. She takes me to where uh, the locker is, where I could put my clothes on and all of that stuff. Now I had to wait for my daughter to pick me up. So um, I'm waiting for my daughter to pick me up. Her and my granddaughter get there. We leave. We go to Mickey D's, which was, oh, my God. It, this is the crazy thing. I was so hungry, and I was like, okay, it's going to be the first thing I'm eating since Wednesday night. Now, they told me that it's okay to eat light, like um, salads and stuff like that. Um, no alcohol for 24 hours. I thought I was going to die, to be honest. I lost my alcohol. Um, so, yeah, I did that. We ended up going to Mickey D's, which was a really nice experience. I got one of the signature burgers, the one that's the um, garlic and white cheddar. <gasps> Ooh, that is really good. But I didn't finish it. I ate half of that, and I ate the fries, and I didn't get a large fry. It was like a... um. A medium, so I ate all the fries and I ate half the burger because my stomach, I guess, you know, you when you don't eat, your stomach shrinks. So I, I ate uh half of that, ate my fries, and then we took the express bus home, which was really nice and comfortable and a great, enjoyable experience. But by the time we got home. And I finally, like, you know, got ready to go to sleep. It had been a long day because I woke up. Hmm. My granddaughter woke me up like 6.15, 6.30. My alarm was set for 7 because I had to be there at 10.30. So it had been a really, really long day. And I was actually going to make this video last night, but I was just so freaking tired. I was so exhausted by um, the time that I, um, you know, gotten ready to the part where I was going to, like, get ready to make the video. I was like, there was no way I'm going to do this tonight, so I'm, I'm making it today. Now, one of the things that I was asking the doctor about was I wanted pictures um, <clears throat> in my unpreparedness. Where do I have them? They're there. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have to get off of camera in order to get them. So hold on a second. I'm going to get them. I'll be right back.